welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. As has been the case for more than 10 years, electricity generally, and ESCOM more specifically, will continue to grab headlines in 2019. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss some of the developments to watch out for in the coming weeks and months. Hi Terence. Hi Snow. The year ended badly for ESCOM as it resumed load shedding and it's off to another difficult start with hearings into its tariff application. Yeah, that's right, you know, ESCOM has this perennial march around the country where it uh, takes out its begging bowl, uh, literally, <laughs> and asks uh, the regulator to give it a, an allowable revenue in terms of a formula that's uh, dictated through an act. So at the moment we're in the, the midst of that process and uh, it's almost deja vu all over again with ESCOM asking for quite a high increase, 15% times f uh, three, so over a three year per period, which would be over and above the relief they've already got from the nurse in terms of that 4.41 or so uh, tariff increase that they'll get to rec recoup some of the, the revenue that they didn't uh, you know, um, earn during the, the period of the NYPD3. So there's, there's, uh, there's obviously a lot of backlash towards Eskom asking for these increases and Eskom, you know, making its case in terms of the formula as to why it should be allowed to, uh, what they say, prudently cover its costs of operating the business, but also being able to uh, be in a sustainable position uh, should it need to, re you know, um, rebuild the assets. So there will be a lot of focus on the depreciation charge this time round, because I think there's a view that maybe Eskom won't necessarily have to replace the assets that it's built, so that maybe things are going to change in future, and that uh, you'll see more private operators, RPPs, that will be uh, bringing in the electricity. So does Eskom need to get that full uh, charge uh, in the allowable revenue? I think is going to be a major focus, particularly for some of the business actors. But generally, society is not happy with uh, the proposed 15% hike. Uh, before the RCAs and another RCA application in this time around as well. And uh, I was saying, you know, with the inflationary environment in South Africa, the cost of living that's really increased massively, this is not, uh, uh, this is not something that uh, citizens and businesses can bear. And on top of it, they're warning Eskom, you know, it's getting to a point now where your the cost of buying electricity from Eskom is getting uh, to levels where other alternatives are now becoming more feasible and therefore you're just going to accelerate what people call the utility death spiral where they, their costs continue to rise and their revenue continues to fall which is something we've really seen over the last 10 years as tariffs have spiked. So the, the, the debates are, I suppose the trenches are dug at uh, almost like South Africa's Brexit. Given the state of the utility, tariff hikes are unlikely to be enough to address its debt burden. That's the thing. I mean, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the consumer uh, is going to have to bear some of the burden. The taxpayer, I think, is also going to be leaned upon. So we know that Eskom is not in a sustainable position. Uh, you can see from all the financial ratios that have deteriorated over the uh, number of years now that uh, it's got into a position now where it's having to raise debt to pay for debt repayments. So it's a totally unsustainable position. The debt levels have now reached almost 420 billion rand. It's a massive figure. And you know, it's rising and unless some actions are taken um, to either increase the revenue through the tariff or volumes, and volumes are looking more and more tricky as I mentioned with alternatives coming in and the weak economy, you know, um, and to get some other relief it's going to be very difficult for Eskom to be a sustainable and fundable and bankable business. And uh, that's a real crisis, not only for Eskom and its employees, but for South Africa. And uh, I think it's a year where something's going to give around Eskom. I think for many years, this can has been kicked down the road, both on the tariff end where people cheer uh, very low increases from the regulator, and especially in the context where Eskom is the, 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 bad, the bad player, the bad actor in terms of corruption and inefficiency. And there's a lot of um, uh, unhappiness with that. But even if you take some of that corruption out and even if you take some of that inefficiency out, Eskom unfortunately will remain uh, unsustainable. And I'm not saying they shouldn't do that. There has to be every effort to root out corruption, get the money paid back where it was 
stolen from Eskom, but that's not really going to cut it if you look at the size of this enterprise and the sort of, uh, sort of going concern uh, threats and vulnerabilities to this organization. So I think it's going to be a year of a reality check in, uh, for Eskom, for all of us. And I think sadly we are going to see quite a large tariff hike, but usually the regulator doesn't give Eskom what it wants. But I think in terms of the formula and having gone through that, uh, some of that paperwork, it does look like they are able to justify quite a lot of those increases. And then we've got the uh, issue that that's still not going to be enough. <laughs> so we're going to then lean on the other lever, um, which is the taxpayer. It's the same person generally. And um, the taxpayer in the form of some sort of debt restructuring or debt relief to Eskom, because unless that comes through, it seems, in the real world, and I know um, there's going to be a lot of unhappiness about such a statement, but in the real world, I think Eskom is going to be a failed utility and the bailout, you know, the bailout now is going to be large. I mean, the figure already in the public domain is 100 billion in terms of debt relief or debt restructuring, which is massive. But I think it's going to only grow unless we start uh, uh, actually getting our hands around the problem and taking the actions that are needed to get ESCOM back onto some sort of sustainable footing. Outside of ESCOM, some other big decisions are required for the future sustainability of electricity supply in South Africa. Yes, I think Eskim is a burning platform issue and it is integral to some of these future decisions that have to be made around the structure and the viability of South Africa's uh, electricity supply industry going well into the future. We know the current model is broken. We know that Eskim is broke. And I think doing a business as usual type uh, restructuring, just the bailout, just the cost cutting exercise, just more tariff increases, although, as I say, those are probably necessary just to get us, you know, create the bridge to the other side, because I think we really are on the cliff. Um, so we need that bridge to the other side, um, and it's going to be painful, but we need to get to the other side. And the other side is quite a different electricity supply industry. It's one where the vertically integrated utility model, uh, I think, is going to not, you know, it's not going to be fit for that sort of purpose. And the, and the main reason is there's, a, there's technology disruption um, happening around the world. We see variable renewable energy is now the cheapest form of new electricity. So in a country that has sun, wind and land, I think we're going to see th that competitive um, electricity becoming a major force. Uh, major component of our supply, in fact the major component, the wor workhorse of our electricity system which is always dependent on coal. That requires a whole different uh, mindset around the way you manage the system because you need to bring in a lot more flexibility for when the sun isn't shining, the wind isn't blowing. And it, you know, a vertically integrated utility model is just not going to cut it and I think all over the world that is biting and it is very difficult. So moving from a centralized to a more decentralized system, from vertical integration to disaggregation, I think is going to happen. But then getting back to your earlier two questions is that roadmap is not there and we've got the ESKIM um, Sustainability Task Team working for President Sora Ramaphosa with a report to come out later this month, which will help hopefully give us some visibility, uh, firm visibility of what that future looks like but it's the bridge to that future that we're going to live through this year. And that bridge to this future is going to be built on probably tariff increases, definitely a focus on cost cutting at uh, and efficiencies at Eskom, which must happen in a crackdown on corruption. And uh, sadly, I think it's going to also include some form of bailout from the taxpayer. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.